ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू एज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ हिस लिमिटलेस ग्रेस स्वामी मिथ्यलाइज विभूति और अदर ऑब्जेक्ट्स ही कॉल्स दिस प्रोसेस संकल्प सिद्धि दिस मीन्स दैट ऑब्जेक्ट्स और क्रिएटेड only through swami's sankalpa not only vastu objects but i have seen many vastus buildings structures erected through swami's sankalpa to name a few prashant nilayam dharma kshetra shivam sundaram traye brindavan a number of schools and colleges university buildings hospitals the hindu stadium and the huge idols erected there museums planetarium purnachandra and sai kolon hall the sarvadharma stupa have all come up through swami's sankalpa in a short span of time besides even the work that is carried out here whether related to education health care or water projects is carried out smoothly and efficiently well all this happens only due to swami's divine will years ago somebody asked swami some questions regarding this question what power manifests a miracle what power manifests a miracle swami but to call it a miracle is wrong that which is a power which is ever present can it be called a miracle but i have understood your question what you call miracle is a divine power this is a power which is vast and endless like an ocean anyone can come and fill up his vessel with the water of this ocean according to his capacity yes i manifest objects what you call a miracle but not for exhibiting my power one exhibits to impress people the object appears the moment i will it the object of years the moment i will it it is spontaneous yet bhava tad bhavati whatever comes to the mind just happens the objects come in the hand with the sankalpa next question in which year did you attain this divine power swami i chose my birth i chose my mother in life people can choose only a husband or a wife they cannot choose a mother but i chose my mother and right since my birth i have this prema drishti loving glance and divya shakti divine power sri rama and sri krishna had also chosen their mothers they served their people with love shri krishna even took the role of a charity in order to serve well dr bhagwantham was a very well known indian scientist and an ardent devotee of swami once he had attended a science conference at accra in nigeria prior to his departure swami told him go to arusha and meet my devotee dr gadia in accordance with the plan dr bhagwantam reached arusha a r u s h a the people who were present there asked him will you tell us something about swami miracles dr bhagwantam answered thousands of miles away from prashanthalayam i am seeing 
the Om Sri Satya Sai dispensary and Sai Nilayam here. What can be a bigger miracle than this? While elaborating further on this statement, he said, Swami's Siddha Sankalpa and biggest miracle is to bring about transformation among his devotees. However, interestingly, one Swami told Sri Kasturi, if a student does not study all around the year, he is bound to get a zero in the examination. So, just like you need to put hard, hard work into everything, sincere efforts are required in sadhana too. If your sankalpa, sadhana efforts, is not there, what can Swami's Siddhi do? Therefore, our effort is also very much needed. For being healthy, physical well-being alone is not enough. Along with the body, even the mind has to be healthy and strong. Only then can one be called a healthy person. If either of the two gets afflicted, one falls sick. Bhagavan Baba's grace ensures that his devotees are healthy in body and mind. Among the many names of Bhagavan Baba, one name describes him as Om Sritya Sai Sarva Roga Nivarine Nama Om Sri Sritya Sai Sarva Roga Nivarine Nama which means that when the devotees get afflicted with health problems, Swami easily removes the disease and grants good health. As a part of the divine mission and in order to fulfill the promise given to Mother Iswaramma, Bhagavan Baba established the first hospital at Puttaparthi in 1956. A number of health centers were also started, but the pinnacle was reached when on 22nd November 1991, the super speciality hospital came into existence at Prashantanilayam to treat patients completely free of cost for various ailments related to the heart, kidneys, liver, eyes and brain. Although succeeding in such a huge task is possible only to a divine incarnation, some doubting Thomases might ask question, if Baba has the power to cure all diseases, where is the need to build hospitals for health care? The all-knowing Bhagavan Baba has already given a reply to such a question by saying, some people may think, if Swami can cure all diseases by His divine sankalpa, where is the need to construct such a large hospital? If they think deeply, they will realize that it's not the only hospital which belongs to me. All hospitals, wherever they may be, are mine. I keep an eye on all of them. Any person who seeks my help, whoever it may be, whether at home or in a hospital, praying to me any, in any language is mine. Don't limit my existence to Prashantrilayam. From whichever place a person prays for Prashanti with a pure heart, that place turns into Prashanti Nilayam. The truth of this statement can be confirmed through this incident which happened in Canada. There was a family of Indian origin who migrated to Canada. In the initial years, they had to struggle for getting a job, setting up a home, educating the children, etc. While they were still struggling, the lady of the house fell ill. She was found to have tumors all over her body. She was not in a proper emotional state to undergo surgery. Besides, the expenses for the surgery, getting leave from a new job 
were some of the problems faced by the family. It seems as though a major calamity had struck. The lady would constantly worry about her children and their future in case anything should happen to her. This lady was a devotee of Shirdi Sainath. A few years ago, she had heard about Swami being the reincarnation of Shirdi Sai. Only recently, she had been drawn towards Swami and slowly the seed of faith had started sprouting in her heart. And now this calamity, the medical treatment started, but to no avail, every day she used to constantly invoke Swami. Many days passed, even the ups and downs continue, and the fear of death was still looming over her. One night, Swami came in her dream and said, I am changing your blood. He cast upon her a loving, gracious glance and blessed her next day. One of her relatives from India, who also happened to be a doctor, telephoned and suggested a new medicine which was also inexpensive. The lady started taking it immediately and slowly regained her health. The black clouds of calamity disappeared through Swami's assurance in a dream. Not just hers, but even families, mental equilibrium was restored back to normal. Here the important factor to be noted is that all this while neither this lady nor her family had ever had Swami's darshan in person. That is Bhagavan. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has declared Ananyashyantayantomam Yejanah Paryupasate Tesham Nichabhi Yuktanam Yogakshemam Vahamyaham. To those men who worship me alone, thinking of no other, to those ever self controlled, I secure for them that which is not already possessed, that yoga, and preserve for them what they already possess, that is, Kshema. Bhagavan Baba has been similarly looking after the welfare of his devotees. During his childhood, he always gave food and clothes to any needy person who came to his door. Sometimes Mother Isarama used to rebuke Bala Satya, Chail Sai, and say, if you give any more food to the beggars, you will not get your meal. Satya Narayana Swami did not mind this at all. He never stopped giving food and clothes to the needy. Today, Swami's devotees from all over the world are carrying forward the same work as Narayana Seva. Swami says, if you start giving spiritual advice to a person who is starving, what is the use? Instead, feed him, appease his hunger, give him enough clothes. This is your primary duty. All Swami's devotees have this ideal to follow and they put in their best efforts in realizing it. That is Annavastra Dayanama. Annavastra Dayanamaha. He gives us the food and clothes. Then, whenever festival is celebrated at Prashantanayam, a Narayan Seva is mandatory. The poor and needy and the hard-working laborers are giving food and clothes. The joyous expression on their faces and the feeling of gratitude expressed through their eyes is beyond description. It's not just the needy alone, but when any devotee receives Swami's prasad, all his blessings, he is 
overwhelmed with joy to receive a handkerchief which has been touched by swami is an indescribable feeling who who ever gets it preserves it carefully like mahavastra the sacred cloth here is a story from toronto which illustrates the importance of annadana feeding the poor an indian lady living there was swami's duty while doing any kind of work she had the habit of constantly chanting his name in her mind once swami came in a dream and said i am going to make you an annapurna meaning the giver of food saying this he disappeared and on walking the lady remembered the dream and wondered about its meaning she understood the meaning after she woke up that's the point the dream unfolded in a very interesting way a few indians living in toronto came together and formed a maharashtra mandal this group undertakes many cultural and social activities in order that the activities should be well organized there is a working committee whose members are elected once every 3 years each person is given a post and has to take the lead in organization organizing any event the elections were scheduled for the year in which swami came in this lady's dream this lady's dream see this when the time to choose people for the various posts drew near there is a keenness for all other posts but that of annapurna that is distribution of food the other posts provide opportunities to earn respect and enjoy the festivities but the particular responsibility annapurna was very strenuous the person in charge had to arrange food for all the events organized by the group even for feeding the poor she was solely responsible so nobody was keen to take up this position finally everyone decided to give the responsibility to this lady although she was not very keen to accept it swami had given her a hint about this in a dream much earlier so she accepted the responsibility as a directive she worked hard and brought about many positive changes and everyone lauded her work she organized the narayan sevas very well with the result that everyone was pleased with her work finally when her turn came to an end all co-workers asked her to continue the good work permanently which she did swami again came in her dream and said i am very happy with the way you have worked swami words filled her heart with joy and she felt a sense of fulfillment here is an incident from mumbai in 1982 swami was once at dharmakshetra he gave an interview to two doctors when the doctors expressed their concern over malnutrition amongst the poor swami gave them a recipe for protein food the mahila vibhag of sisasai seva organization mumbai started preparing and distributing this food among the children and adults it consists of various roasted dals ground nuts sesame seeds dry ginger cardamom and sugar while it is being prepared the lady sing bhajans ardu namasvarna so the food is charged with spiritual vibrations even now this protein food is being supplied regularly completely free of cost mobile crutches and several hospitals such as nair hospital kama hospital tata memorial and tb hospital 
in Surai. Besides doing Narayan Seva, Swami's devotees also provided protein food to the malnourished children in the Adivasi districts of Maharashtra. They see Satyasai Institute of Agriculture and Biotechnology at Aksa, Mumbai has launched a nourishing protein food known as Sri Satyasai Poshak Ahar, which is given to the malnourished children all over Maharashtra. It has been found very effective in curing nutritional disorders and restoring health. The seed of Narayan Seva that Swami sowed in his childhood has now grown into a huge tree giving succor to millions all over the world. In life, we experience joy and sorrow, gain or loss, according to our past karma. Samartha Ramadas has said, O mind, you alone have stored up the past, and I have to suffer along with you. Swami says, joy and sorrow are equal, like the two scales of a balance. But men give more importance to the sorrow. Hence, they find it heavier. In spite of this, the ever-compassionate Swami constantly alleviates the suffering of those who have surrendered to Him. A long time ago, on hearing about the glory of Shiva Shakti Avatar, a couple went to Puttaparthi for Swami's darshan. Their family had been worshippers of Shiva Shakti since many generations. They were blessed with several interviews and became recipients of Swami's love and His instructions. During one such interview, Swami told them, Life is full of joy and sorrow. God gives you the strength to overcome difficulties. The dark clouds of calamities come and they get dispersed through divine grace. At the time, they did not understand the meaning of this statement. But within eight days, their adolescent son suddenly passed away. This tragic blow of fate was a disastrous calamity. Somehow they managed to hold their own and thought that only Sai Mata could give them the courage to start their life afresh. So they went to Swami. Sai Mata showed her nectarine love on them and pulled them out of their sadness. In spite of this, the boy's father was unable to overcome grief. So during one of the interviews, Swami made him sit in front of him and started singing a bhajan in his sweet melodious voice. Nanda Kishora, Navanita Chora, Vrindavana Sanchara, He Shesha Shayana, He Garuda Gamana, Aravinda Narayana, Gopalana. The father's name was Gopal and the son's name was Aravind. Normally, it is the devotees who sing bhajans to please God. But here God himself composed a bhajan and sang it to his devotee in order to alleviate his suffering. What a rare occurrence. Sukha dukhe same krutva labha labhau jaya jayau the one who accepts both joy and sorrow with the same attitude, equipoise, he always attains victory. May Bhagavan Baba Shava is grace upon all of us so that we may develop this attitude of equipoise. Sairam will meet again later.